Hi, my name is Andrea Burgess. In this presentation, I'm going to give a brief overview of the paper which was published in May 2021 about the relationship between self-care and hand function in children with cerebral palsy. Parents of children with cerebral palsy have identified self-care as one of the most important priorities to them. So in this study, we aim to explore the relationship between self-care and hand function within a holistic framework, which included other relevant personal and environmental factors. In this cross-sectional study, we examined data from the prospective population-based cohort study called PREDICT-CP. Children were seen at one time point between eight and 12 years of age. Self-care was measured in the study using the PEDICAT daily activities domain. Hand function, specifically by manual performance, was assessed using the assisting hand assessment for children with unilateral CP and the both hands assessment for children with bilateral CP. Cognition was assessed using the Raven's colored progressive matrices and there were outcome measures for gross motor function, behavioral regulation, inattention, home environment, and socioeconomic status. In analysis, linear regression was used to estimate the effect of bimanual performance on self-care. The selection of variables used in multiple regression modeling was guided using a directed acyclic graph or a DAG. So a DAG is a type of causal model used to represent causal effects. It's a graphical model which summarizes what is known and it makes explicit what assumptions are being made. The DAG also can identify variables that must be adjusted for. And this is important because studies have shown that unnecessary adjustment may introduce bias. So in this DAG, you can see the relationships we hypothesized existed between self-care and other person and environmental factors. The program Daggerty identified the variables which were required to be adjusted for to estimate the total effect of bimanual performance on self-care in this holistic framework. These were age, cognition, attention span, and self-regulation. So only these variables that were identified as being required for inclusion in multiple regression analysis were used in the modeling. 74 children participated in this study. Children had a manual ability classification level between one and three, as that's what the measures of hand function, the AHA and the BOHA cater for. 22 children had an intellectual impairment and results are shown by noted distribution. That is children with unilateral or bilateral CP. Separate analysis were required as the assessments of hand function, the AHA and the BOHA, while they are very similar, are different measures. You may notice that there are differences between the groups of children. Children with bilateral CP experienced a greater range of challenges with respect to gross motor and cognitive function. Here we see the relationship between self-care and biomanual performance or hand function. Black indicates children with unilateral CP whose hand function was assessed using the AHA. Green indicates children with bilateral CP whose hand function was assessed using the BOHA. And the presence or absence of an intellectual impairment is depicted by shading within the symbol. So you can see there's a strong correlation between the pedicat and both the BOHA and the AHA. So in multiple linear regressions, separate models were used for children with unilateral and bilateral CP. For children with bilateral CP, the model accounted for 68% of the variance in self-care. Bimanual performance and cognition were the only variables which were significant. For children with unilateral CP, the model accounted for 40% of the variance in self-care and no other variable apart from bimanual performance was found to be significant. So the difference effect of cognition seen between the groups is likely due to the greater range of cognitive scores seen in children with bilateral CP compared to the children with unilateral CP. A larger proportion of children had an intellectual impairment in the group of children with bilateral CP. There was a strong correlation between cognition and self-care for the cohort as a whole. This was stronger in children with bilateral CP compared to the children with unilateral CP. 
So this study showed that hand function is a strong determinant of self-care when considered in a holistic framework, which considers other environmental and personal factors. And children with bilateral CP have a greater range of challenges with respect to motor and cognitive function compared to the children with unilateral CP. Research implications from this study include learning about the usefulness of causal modelling to ensure that bias is minimised when estimating causal effects in analysis. With regards to limitations, a larger sample size would have enabled more detailed analysis. Children classified in max levels four and five were not included. And while a DAG makes our assumptions about the causal relationships explicit, the model cannot prove the causal relationship. So in summary, hand function, specifically by manual performance, was strongly and positively associated with self-care in children with cerebral palsy when considered in a holistic framework. BOHA scores accounted for more variation in self-care than AHA scores. And there was a positive association between self-care and cognition for the cohort overall. However, the effect of cognition differed for children with bilateral and unilateral CP, likely reflecting the greater range of cognitive challenges experienced by children with bilateral CP. So for more detailed information, please see the paper and the supplementary information which was published in volume 63 of Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please send an email. Thanks.